Well, I uh, fired up my uh, Paramatic 87. I'm not sure what year this thing is. And working great, and then fire, <laughs> fired it up one last time, and and uh, it uh, it started shaking and making weird noise and stuff like that. And uh, basically, uh, my neighbor was over checking things out too. And and as I was standing back here watching the pulley, I saw it move way out and go back in and move around a little bit. And the motor jumped around, and then I saw the the key spit out of the center hole there and I was like, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> so I had him shut it off and so I'm looking at it this morning trying to figure out what it what it needs and I definitely don't want to take that spring off. That's uh, definitely too much but if uh, there is a set screw in there uh, but I can't get to it until the sheaves are spread apart. <coughs> That ain't gonna happen. Oh, there's another key. There's another uh, uh, set screw right on the uh, keyway. That makes sense. Model number C one four five one one seven F B two A two oh eight two thirty full load amp six point two horsepower two. Okay, I'm gonna go see if I can find a way to spread these. Well, how about that shit? <clears throat> okay, so I took a big gear puller. If you can see it there, I put a, a nut in the end of the shaft there. Just just a nut. There was a chamfer inside, so it sits in the chamfer and centers itself, and then that allowed the gear puller point to center. Um, this clamp here is because I'm missing one of these bars. It broke. Uh, it's been on the list of things to do to make new bars for quite some time but once I got it started I got some pressure on it I went ahead and clamped it with vice grips and I think you can see down in there the uh, set screw oh my mistake the lack of a set screw who knows where it is really the one that I'm really concerned with is the one over the keyway so I can go ahead and pull that out and find out what it is uh, looks a little bigger than quarter twenty. I'm guessing five sixteenths. Let's go find one. Well, I've got several, but they're too long, so I am going to go shorten it. Uh, I'm going to take a cutoff wheel and cut it down close to the length I need, and then I'm just going to use the uh, belt grinder and give it a little uh, chamfer there. Looking at that hole, there's never there's never been one in there. There's a small bit of damage. Probably wouldn't hurt to go get a new one, but... And tight. Hopefully that'll stay that way, huh? Oh. Cool. Save myself a step. Uh, let's back this off now. I don't know if that's holding it uh, out. Oh yeah, as it's walking around, it's pushing its way back in. Giving the belt tension again. Okay. Cool. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. There's a bolt here that goes down and and holds it down but there's also one here that is supposed to hold the motor down because that section is all just you know steel frame these belts are good and tight that's the adjuster for it
Well, that'll certainly help keep the motor from jumping around. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it won't transmit too much noise. Now, see, now that I have the one screw in there, I can go ahead and go buy proper length ones and not have to uh, mess with uh, doing that. And then what I can do is, when I, I could stop the machine at a higher uh, RPM, when this will be pulled in tighter, this will be open more, and then I can just get in there with a flashlight and turn it until I can see it, and then I can put the other set screw in. I don't have to go through all this grief of uh, pulling it and that stuff. So you know, with the gear puller and trying to spread it and that kind of thing. So I had it at neutral the whole time. Uh, I didn't have the bandsaw blade swinging around there. Oh yeah, and you can easily get in there. And, yeah, there's the set screw hole and there's the other one. Cool. This should be the fill, so that way the fill would be up to that same point. But I can't tell there's anything in there, so it might behoove me to um, check that instead of running the transmission too long dry. Okay. Ooh, that looks nice and clear. There's just not enough of it. <laughs> and it is basically leaning back toward this corner, so that thing's empty. And it was originally running with half inch thick blades. I ordered one inch based on uh, recommendation for what I'm cutting. Uh, I think I'll probably go back to half inch, but for now, one inch is what I have on hand, and I definitely want to make it work. So anyway, I, I started to take out the uh, the lower blade guide here because I want to make the adjustments and it dawned on me. It's like, you know, I have not been able to find any videos of the adjustments. And I'm not saying I know how to do these adjustments, but I figured I'll document what I do and figure out. So it is hard up against that bearing right there, the guide bearing. Um, and it's still not back on the, the wheel far enough. And so the, according to the book, it said, uh, for the lower guide, well, let me just read it to you. These, these are real easy to get. You can find these uh, uh, online. I, you can download the PDF. I chose to go ahead and just buy a hard copy, so I didn't have to bother printing it. But uh, uh, it does talk here, if the blade width to be installed is less than half an inch, use the 3 16 thick shim uh, back of the upper guide and turn the step bar, the step in the bar support for the lower guide toward the trunnion. So uh, I do know what they're talking about here on the top one. Uh, I'm concerned with this step in the bar for the lower guide. And what they're talking about here, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're talking about this step right here. So I'm going to take this piece off, turn this bar around. And so I was, I was easily able to get the bolt out of here, but in order to get it out of here, I needed to uh, twist it. So I took, the, I loosened the guides up and uh, just worked it out of there. So now I'll take these, so now I'll take these two off and clean it and turn it around and we'll go from there. This is a 5 16 I may not be able to do it by hand here. Oh, well that wasn't very tight. Oh, that was even looser. Okay, so it was like this, pushing it out. I want to put it back on like that. So if you notice, it is countersunk, counterboard on both sides there. So all we have to do is make sure we don't have any junk high up. Cool. And that should just fit right back on there. Okay, basically I've, I've got the bar down far enough that 
tighten the vise up and it just simply holds the, the pieces in alignment there because uh, everything's so tight that when I went to tighten that up I couldn't hold it in line so it wasn't straight uh, okay so there's the step so that's effectively uh, back from where it was so I'm gonna spray some of this wonderful magical uh, Max film uh, Brad at the uh, tactical keychains turned me on to it and I'll tell you what it's uh, pretty cool stuff and you don't need a whole lot so I'm just gonna dribble a little in there and so I just sprayed a little on the back side there so I can it'll seep in a little bit and work in Looks like I can take it off with a snap ring, but it's uh, spinning pretty smooth now. Oh yeah, now that it's uh, now that it's actually seeping down in there, it's uh, getting really smooth. It had a couple of little t -t 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 little ticks in it or whatever. Awesome. Okay, so that should. Uh, that should take care of my issue with that. Now, considering I'm going to be... The vast majority of my cutting is going to be uh, with the table at 90 degrees, I'm going to keep that pushed up there. I'm pretty sure that when I turn the table on the trunnion that I'm going to need to lower that down. I, I don't have any plans of cutting uh, at an angle yet, but I'll tell you what, man, chamfering for uh, welding, this thing just may be the ticket. Okay. But now that I've got this uh, squared away, it should be a piece of cake to do that. Yeah, you can see there's a gap back there. Okay. Put this thing in neutral. And I can spin it by hand. And Boy, the wheel just backed right up in a heartbeat there. Okay, there's still at least a sixteenth of an inch. All right, but it's hitting the top one. All right, so here's the top one. And, okay, so right between the black and the green right there is where this shim was. Uh, and that's the three sixteenths shim they're talking about uh, that pushed this forward. As you can see, though, it is... Oh, uh, boy, using the light really blocks everything out, doesn't it? Um, everything else. Uh, it is touching the wheel. And it really, from what I've been reading on bandsaws and stuff like that, you really only want it to touch the wheel when you put some pressure on it. While it's just sitting there running, you don't want it to. So there is a tracking on the backside, and I need to go ahead and bring that forward and make sure that uh, it's not being held there by this bearing. Now, there's no way to track the bottom one. They can be taken off and have shims put behind it. I really like where it's at, though. Yep, you can tell it came off the bearing there. So I'm not extremely thrilled with this. I don't really want to hang it out, everything I've read. And of course, all the information you find out there is all for wood bandsaws. I can't imagine the information being different, okay? If a wood bandsaw belt is blade is supposed to track one way on an 87, Model 87, I'd be willing to bet the metal one's supposed to do the same way. Now, everybody, I didn't find any information out there with one-inch blades, okay? So everybody's using... Uh, half inch or three eighths or something even smaller. This will go down to a quarter inch blade. Considering how nice and quiet that is, because it's not touching, you know, I should put some oil in. That makes the good bit of noise there. I think I'll put some lubrication in it too, so. Oh! I figure the 
some of the crud right here on the mounting surface and go ahead and get that cleaned up. So it's quieter. I think that might be good for now. I'm not sure I want to sacrifice any more uh, of this for that. And let's see here, when the blade guides come into play, they shouldn't be rubbing, it should be like a ten thou piece of a paper or something like that. Sounds like they are rubbing. It may just take a little bit to get the belt seasoned. Because if you if you watch the belt, you'll see it run back and forth just a little bit. So I'm thinking once uh, uh, once it's been warmed up a couple times, cutting stuff like that, it will uh, relax a little bit, and maybe that'll go away, and then I can make some of these adjustments a little bit tighter. So plug it in, and let's see how it responds. I couldn't even close this all the way when I started running it the first time because this was pushing the bearing out so far that it uh, just did not go back far enough to clear. So and I wouldn't be surprised if that's broken. Considering how far down the bearing adjust is here, you know, that's how that's the height of whatever you're cutting. You know, it's going to have to clear here. Uh, I may go ahead and make another piece of plexiglass to put on here that goes down further. So that that way, when this clears, it will also clear the back. But it doesn't leave me that extra space for uh, finger cutting. You know what I mean? Something else I want to check into is uh, right there. The That doesn't seem to be rubbing on the belt but it's got uh, carriage bolts with nuts on the backside. So it looks like I'm gonna have to go through from the backside to uh, adjust that. It keeps a, a lot of debris on the, on the belt here. And I will replace these belts, or the tires rather, but uh, not today. I got, I got a lot of stuff uh, coming up here. I gotta get, gotta get cut first. Gotta make some money too before I start buying more stuff like that. Okay, drill a couple holes. And yes, this is one of those times where the gloves are kind of a pain, but... Mmm. Purdy. All right, that ought to help save a couple fingers, huh? Uh, if I push through that, I guess I'll uh, get some uh, thicker plexiglass or new fingers. That'll make it just so, so that when I, I need to cut something, you know, I can just take that height and just raise it up there and know that I am just barely going to clear, you know, and not have any more exposed than I need to. It's a one-man shop. There is no OSHA here. Awesome. Let's do something else.